Freier Ridings. I have to say Freya. It's Freya. The yeah. German is Freya. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. That explains a lot. <laughs> I have someone in my family uh, called Freya, and you are called in England and in international. It's it's Freya. Freya. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I guess it's because it's a Scandinavian name. So because um, she was like the Viking goddess of love. I don't want my parents to name me that. But um, yeah, that's so cool. Okay. Then we start because I, I saw in the charts and I hear it in the charts is a song about you. And it's not only the music of you in the charts. It's a song about you. And when you when you want to hear it, we can play it for you. What song is in the charts? Uh, you have to hear it, I think. What is okay. that? Okay. I don't care when pink will sing. It's winter time or is it spring? Hot a cold shower for my brain, it's Freya, I'm in love. Oh God, did you sing me a song? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's amazing. Uh, I think it's top five in Germany at the That's moment. That's incredible. Oh, <laughs> I can see that going right to the top. Okay. Um, I think a little quid quiz about you and my question, your yeah. answer, your song to mm -hmm. introduce you now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I uh, will make the question mm -hmm. and you give the answer when you would like to sing. It's, uh, the answer is um, every time it's a song of you. Okay. Okay. Winston, England. Mm -hmm. Neu Augustusburg in our area in Weißenfels in Versailles in France. Are what they are. What kind of buildings are they? Oh, castles. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can sing the answer if yeah. you want. Castles. <laughs> yeah. Schloss. Yeah, Schloss. Yeah, Schloss. yeah, yeah Schloss. that's right. Yeah. yeah. When the week starts, I'm looking forward to see Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, because that means. What? Ooh, was that again? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday? Yeah. Wait. Oh, the weekend. Yeah. Weekends. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I get it now. I'm starting to get it. It's my songs are the answers. Okay, I get you. Take it's, me a second. It's not like bingo, yeah? No, <laughs> yeah, it's not like bingo. I was like, I could make any guesses. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I have no matches for the wood in the Kimne. What can I take also? The answer is a song of you. What can I take also? Oh, oh, I don't know. That's a tough one. I uh, mean, elephant? Oh, is it off the new album? Yeah. Oh. Oh, of the old, I don't know. Um, uh, it's on the first side. It's on the first side. Uh, and the first song. Uh, poison. No, sorry. No. Uh, um, uh, the fifth song. Uh, holy Water. No. <laughs> so I just can't count. It's like, I literally can't count at this point. I think we have to stop the, the competition here. Yeah. Fair oh, play. But, <laughs> but that was a fun bingo game. It's Love is Fire. Oh, Love is Fire. Yeah. Oh, okay, my bad. Okay. Last. Mm -hmm. Okay. You are in a strange city that I know, but I'm not there. What that means for you? I'm lost without you. Yeah. Yeah. The first point. Got it. <laughs> you can sing once again the answer if you want. I'm lost without you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you say Schloss and you say Dankeschön. Uh, that's the German word. I know. I really want to learn German. I didn't get to study at school, but now I'm like, I would have, I should have pushed for that. That would have been so useful right now. But we can learn it if you want. I know. Maybe I'll start. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I've started okay. on Duolingo. It might just take me a hot minute. My mum's got a thousand day streak and she can basically speak German. Now it's crazy. I should have started with her. I'm so <laughs> kicking myself. I can be your teacher if you want. Just like on the phone. Just yeah. that when I go back to London, just be like, I've got okay. some new words I need to learn. Yeah, I, I can be uh, your teacher if I want for words that are typically for this area. Okay. Yeah, okay. I give it, um, I write it down. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Um, if you have some questions to pronounce it, I will help you. Is it ein one I ein one frein? I'd one ein one frein? Ein one frei, yeah. Ein one frei. Yeah, it's like it's it's fantastic. Oh, ein one frei. It's incredible here in this area. When you say ein one frei, you repeat it, please. Ein one frei. Ein one frei. Yeah, and this one is um, when you when you put the question about when you want to hear what time is it. You have to say this one. Was schmus der Lubbert? Was, wait, was schmus der Lubbert? Now, um, I sound like a baby, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I probably sound like a toddler. <laughs> And the next one, it's um, when you see a person in the south of this area, like in Halle or something else, um, you have to say this one. Grüß dich, meiner. Grüß dich, meiner. Yes, it sounds brilliant. Okay. And the last one, that's very important for you um, and to, to speak it here in Germany. Oh, this yeah. is a long word. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Mutzekiebchen. Mutzekiebchen. 
What's a keepshin? It's a ladybug. Oh, yeah, I saw there were so many ladybirds everywhere. Yes, I went for a walk around the corner and it was just like ladybirds everywhere, but they were all like in little huddles. Like, I've never seen that many ladybirds in my life. An invasion. Yeah, it was like an invasion of red and black ladybirds. Is that a famous thing around here? No, you know it. It's, yeah. it's a Mutzekiebchen. Mutzekiebchen. Yeah, yeah. I brilliant. saw them everywhere. <laughs> Lots of Mutzekiebchen. <laughs> now some personal questions. We would like to know you a little bit better with uh, some either or some either or questions mm -hmm. if you want. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Either or. Coffee or tea? Tea. Cucumber or baked beans? Oh, that's really tough. I'm going to have to go with <laughs> baked beans, actually. I love baked beans. Streaming or cinema? Um, streaming. Yeah. yeah. Only the things with your father? Oh, I'm just trying to think. Wait, I'll go back. Cucumber and cinema. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking it back. I'm, just, I'm overthinking things. Rain or sun? Sun. Driving license or dentist? Oh, driving license. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of the dentist. Money for shoes for, or uh, put the uh, money to the bank for the future? Oh my God, I do love shoes. Oh, probably <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Pure skin or some tattoos? Oh, I don't have any tattoos, but I think they look great on other people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start the interview. Thank you for the That's warming right. up with you. Yeah, Fun, fun. What does music mean to you? Music means everything to me. Honestly, it's like, it is my entire life at this point. And I, I love it so much. I think it's, it's so beautiful because I think when I'm doing this and I'm writing songs and you're kind of doubting yourself and you're putting your heart and soul out there, what people are going to say to it. But after songs like Lost Without You and Castles, like I felt so vulnerable sharing those songs and I played them for years and years and years before they became like hits. So for me, it's kind of like taking that leap of faith again has taken so much, but I'm so proud of the new album. But for me, music, when I'm in my lowest points and I listen to the music that helps lift, lift me back up, I suddenly get a glimpse into like, that if I've ever done that for anyone, I'm just like in awe of it. And some of the messages I get still, you know, on Instagram about Lost Without You and Castles, like blow my mind. It's like just had an actual impact in people's lives. And I just, I can't, I feel so incredibly honored. You sing, I don't have really friends in your song weekends. How many friends? I know, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, how many friends do you have in, in your real life? Well, no, this is the thing. At the time, basically, I'd broken up with um, my ex and I was just really, really struggling because I was doing so much work and I was kind of using the adrenaline of being on tour and traveling to kind of run from that heartbreak and like not feel it. And I think after the pandemic, when everything kind of stopped, that was the first sort of, I sort of whispered it into my voice um, voice memo on my iPhone and then just left it there because I was like, that is too embarrassing. But how many friends do I actually have now? I have quite, a, it's very like small circle, to be fair. Like my family are kind of like my best friends. Like my brother is my best friend, really. Um, and then also I have like a best friend called Chelsea who lives on the same road and we've known each other for like 10 years now. But, you know, friendships kind of go up and down, you know, and I have a friend called James. But it's pretty much like there's about six people who are like my people. <laughs> But uh, let me just ask a quick, uh, quick question because I feel like the weekend is a very personal song. It is. So when you put it out there and it's played on the radio and yeah. all your neighbors know what's going on it's inside so of you. <laughs> they're like, hey, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I did an interview once and they were just like, oh, I hope like you like, you know, go home tonight and like, you know, don't just like sit at home at the piano with no friends. I'm like, how do you know that? And they were like, oh, I put it in a song and put it out. Damn it. Mm. Um, but I feel like that was a timestamp of a moment in my life of like real, real heartbreak. And I just, I wanted to be vulnerable and share it because I feel like, I don't know, I was so embarrassed to admit it that I feel like those things that you're scared to say, like really scared to say, are the things that other people need you to say more as a songwriter. Um, so that's what I tried to do. But yeah, it's well embarrassing when my, when my neighbours are like, are you all right? I'm like, yes, I'm fine. And did that experience somehow change your way of songwriting? Like, oh, I want to put that on because that's a fabulous line. And then, oh no, I can't say that because of my neighbours. Yeah, basically. Well, when I wrote Lost Without You, I remember thinking, I am never going to show this to a living soul. I was like, this song makes me cry every time I play it. And it just, to me, that vulnerability was really intimidating to show people because you have no idea if they're going to, you know, give you a big hug or kind of emotionally kick you in the teeth. You don't know what's coming. So you're like, please be nice. But at the same time, I've had nothing but just like warmth and love and support for the whole time I've been like making music. But there's always that, you know, fear in your head that one day people are going to be like, that's too much vulnerability for us. Stop it. <laughs> but when you get back a good feedback, it, it, it boosts your, uh, your energy and your confidence, exactly. doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And also just getting to like connect with people. That's why I love like, you know, releasing music and playing shows and festivals because you get to actually like see into you know real people's eyes and they're like you have this big shared you know feeling in common and you can really like connect with people and that's what I love the most great your new album called now blood orange we yeah. knew it as a 
It's a fruit. It's a fruit. Yeah. <laughs> sour, really sour. The taste is sour. Why did your record got this title, Blood Orange? I know so many people have asked me that question that I'm like, why did I even call it that? But I think for me, I wanted it to have this kind of organic but euphoric feeling. If the first album was more melancholic, I wanted this one to be more like still melancholic, but with a bit more euphoric, like, you know, real real acoustic guitar, real instruments was like my goal for this, you know, like real people singing and playing violin and brass and hand claps. And so that's where the organic feeling came from. And I was like, and also from the 70s, there's a lot of influences of the 70s. And I just like the idea of like only having instruments that you could drag to a blood orange tree and play around it, kind of like in a campfire setting. That was my goal. Um, and we kind of did that with a bit more of like a pop sheen, but also because of like the metaphor slowly unfolded. After I chose the title blood orange, the metaphor slowly unfolded about, you know, the kind of, the time and the darkness, the roots and the soil and the kind of the growth, the inner growth that it took to get to this point where I could even make this album and just enjoying the fruits of that that pain because that's kind of what this time is now, I think. 14 songs on a record, yeah? Yeah, I wanted 16, but people said no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got more songs, guys. I've got so many more. And it got on the, on the record as a special uh, competition when, when you put the videos in Instagram and yeah. your fans said, okay, this one is good and you put it on. Yeah? The fans genuinely, like in lockdown, you know, when everything just stopped in the pandemic, basically I was like, oh my God, I have to make a second album, but with like no help, like no feedback. And I was like, oh my God. So I just started playing these weekly Instagram live shows and I'd prop up the, my phone on the, my piano and just play. And my dad would like bring me cups of tea and be like, do you want anything? It was like a whole family affair, but I'd play like old songs like Lost Without You and then new songs and they would help me choose which ones that they liked and my mom would go through them like the comments afterwards like a little tally score and be like they've asked for this new one like this many times mm -hmm. and so their fans helped me choose the songs that went on the album like they really helped me create this this album and I kind of love the fact that I was able to kind of let them in like that because they really helped me You can't sing at the coronation of King Charles the I know. Third. Yeah, okay. Yeah. When will you catch up uh, those days? Uh, when will you perform a private concert in the Buckingham Palace? But I I haven't done it in Buckingham Palace, but I have played for Prince William and Catherine before, and they are the loveliest people. And they're he's actually a, Prince William is a really big fan of castles, which I didn't really realize until he asked me to play. So I've had like you know ties with the royal family before, and it's a sh real shame that I couldn't play at the coronation. But who knows? I'm sure there'll be many more opportunities. <laughs> And your song, Lost Without You, is one of the most used songs for opening dance of a wedding. Yeah. I know, I yeah. can't get over that. Because yeah. in my head, it's more of like, I get a lot of messages about like funeral songs. And I was like, that makes more sense because the song is really sad. But for a wedding, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Did you use your song for your own wedding as well? No. <laughs> No, I didn't. I actually walked down the aisle. What did I walk down the aisle to? Oh, time after time, I Cindy Lauper, but like played okay. on a string quartet. But it was a very, very small, like intimate wedding. Yeah. I have to ask you because um, many people look at your hair, your wonderful hair. Oh, and, thank and, her. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what do you take for products to, to, to get this, uh, this curlies? Um, yeah. I have a lot of help. It's a question of a boy. I, yeah. Is it a boy yeah, question? Yeah, it's uh, really interesting because this is my natural hair color and I've always been like a redhead my whole life. I'm the only redhead in my family, which makes me kind of like, ooh. Like, um, so basically... I used to be really embarrassed of it and now I'm like so proud of it with my fiery nature. Um, but I get I get it done a lot, like heated a lot. And so over the years, this is the natural like length of my hair, but then it was starting to get burnt off because it was getting heat, heated so much. So these are extensions from this amazing brand called Balmain and they send me the perfect hair match and, and no one would know. So I'm very grateful to them because I get to keep flipping my hair around at concerts. <laughs> And um, many people say, okay, Freya Ridings will be the, the next style icon. Oh, yeah. that's so nice. Yeah. I try. I've got a new stylist. He's so cool. He's called yeah. Carl Willett. I love him. Where do you get the inspiration for uh, the things that you buy or the, do you wear? I think a lot of it is like intuitive, like things that I love, but also like working with amazing stylists. Like I've learned so much. Like when I started doing this, I had no idea what to wear. I couldn't do my own makeup to save my life. And just learning from these incredible, like, you know, stylists and makeup artists, you learn so much. It's like a masterclass every day. You're like, oh, teach me something. Um, but yeah, recently I've loved working with the new stylist. That's where all the gloves are coming from. And on Graham Norton show, we actually make, we've got a dress made for that. And it's like half a cat suit, half a dress over the top which was just so wild and I just I love dressing up and sort of giving people a show visually because like when I go to see shows what people are wearing is like my favorite you know bit so I think it's like elevating the whole thing I love I love fashion yeah before you celebrate a concert mm -hmm. uh, how would you prepare your voice is it um, I've heard that you make some some um Yeah, bird, bird's voices. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How do you know that? Yeah, um, yeah I have vo a vocal teacher um, in LA who I absolutely adore. I think he's the 
best in the world. And basically he's, we've got an hour long tra vocal training that I try and do every, and then when I, before a show, I do the whole hour of the vocal warm up before the show, which and then the show is like about an hour and a half. So, and then I do a vocal cool down afterwards. It's like a muscle, like working out in the gym, you have to warm it up and then you have to cool it down. Otherwise, you know, it can get a bit stiff. <laughs> what did you want to be um, as it was as a child? Oh, fun question. Until before I found music, actually, I wanted to be a blacksmith. I know that sounds crazy, but I love the idea of like making like, like shields or like, like jewelry or like mm -hmm. armor. Like I really love history. And I was like, I thought that could be really, really cool. And then I saw how hot it was and I was like, oh, I can't handle that. <laughs> well, that is so fitting for your name, isn't it? Yeah. For the origin of your name. Yeah. Absolutely. That's my goal one day is to like fly through an arena, like wearing like armor and then like take it off and like, Amazing. you know, I have like a dress underneath. Yeah. I'd love that. <laughs> The last nights were very hot. Yeah? Oh my and we, God, we, so we can't hot. Sleep. How was it for you? <laughs> it was it was okay. I think I'm naturally quite a chilly person. So for me, I can just about handle this. But bless my tour manager, Lisa, is like, oh, like she overheats so easily. And bless her, I was like, this is the hottest that we've probably been in a long time. But we're playing Glastonbury, not today, but the day after. And the last time we played, it was like, 37, 38 degrees Celsius. And I put on this like sequence and I was like, oh, it was like midday. And I was like, I might explode. It was like the hottest I've ever been. And also with the extensions, it's like wearing a big, you know, fur coat. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's kind of nice. Like we, we get so little sunshine in like Northern Europe. We've just got to enjoy it when we get it, right? I've heard that you still live in the house where you grow up, especially in your old child uh, children, children's room. Yeah? I've moved out now. Okay. I've got my own place. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Your parents happy that you have a, your own house now? They're so happy. It's just like it gives them more space. Um, and my brother still lives at home and they live literally like three roads away from me. Okay. So I can go and walk and see them whenever, which I love. It's my favorite thing just to pop around and be like, hello. It's like, it's like a little village vibe, even though we live in London. What will be a perfect day for you? A really Ooh, perfect day. A perfect day. Um, I feel just like maybe like a beautiful sunny day, like at home and just going to see lots of like, like family members like where I live and then maybe all kind of having like a big like barbecue and a big sing along around a campfire I think that would be kind of my perfect day or maybe like going to the beach and doing the same thing yeah I don't know if it is a rumor because I've wrote in the, in the newspaper that um, you don't want to sing with Ed Sheeran is it right <laughs> no basically I was doing a session with Steve Mack who is the amazing producer of like Shape of You and yeah. and Happier by Marshmallow and basically he was like, oh, like there's a song I'm working on with Ed. And I was like, oh, amazing. Yeah, we worked on weekends together. He produced weekends. And um, he was like, oh, I'm working on this song. And he's like, would you like to help? And I was like, of course I'd love to help. I'd love to help. Um, and then I was like, oh, I'm just like, you know, finishing my album. And then then I'd love to help. And somehow that got changed into, I didn't want to do it. And I was like, no, I would have loved to do it. <gasps> yeah, I'd still love to do it. Yeah, Ed. If you hear me, yeah, love to. He does, he does, always. We know, <laughs> I know. He, always we know he listens to, to this morning show. Channel. <laughs> <laughs> What will come next to you? What Ooh. are your plans? Um, I'm, well, I'm really, really excited because we're going to play Glastonbury on Friday. Wow. And then straight after that, I really wanted to stay for the whole of Glastonbury, but we're going to fly straight to LA the night or the morning after because I've we've written a song that's going to be on a film. We're going to I'm going to play the song at the premiere of that film in LA. And so who knows what happens after that, but I'm so excited for this song to come out. I really, really, really love it. And it's just, it's always been one of my dreams to write songs for films and TV. And I get a lot of like syncs on film and TV anyway. So to get to write to a brief was so much fun. I loved it. Wonderful. From my side, um, I can listen to you, to your music and to your voice uh, every time, but I think it's finished for the interview at the, at the moment. Oh, thank you. Do, do you want to say something? Else? Oh yeah, I'm so excited. Basically, we're playing a show in Cologne on the 22nd um, of July and that's quite that's coming around quite quickly. So I would love to see you guys there. That's the only show we're going to do at Cologne probably for the next like year. So that's the one time that we're going to be there. And then we're going to do a proper German tour at the end of the year sort of late October into November and I would love to see you guys there it's a brand new show we've got brass we've got so much going on and I can't wait to share it with you guys and uh, yesterday she announced uh, the tour dates Taylor Swift you're a big fan of <gasps> I'm a big fan yeah. I saw that and I was literally like my one of my friends is a, a roadie um, and he was crew on one of the supports of Taylor Swift's um, US tour and I was like please David please get me into this tour like I would do anything I'm so bad at buying tickets like my computer's never fast enough to get any <laughs> tickets I don't know how people get tickets to be fair um but it's yeah that's honestly I'm going to be there 100% it's like a spiritual experience at this point yes I will be there <laughs> but we look first to see you on stage yeah Freya Radix many yeah. thanks oh, thanks thank a lot you,